After the war, nothing went to waste in the kitchen. From essential to extinct, these 20 post-war meals mark a forgotten chapter we're eager to reopen. Let's get into it. Spam and eggs was a classic during World War II when Spam was not only dirt cheap, but also readily available everywhere. Spam's reputation as one of the hardiest, affordable, and long-lasting meat products made it a perfect fit for the tough times. Plus, its delicious taste spoke for itself. I mean, imagine a salty, processed meat block nestled next to a sunny-side-up egg. It's a match made in, uh, well, wartime necessity. It originated during the Great Depression era, but World War II is when it became a hit around the globe. Now, let's be honest, it's not exactly gourmet. Spam continued to be popular in the post-war era and became a staple in most American households. While Spam is still around today, it's no longer the breakfast star it once was. So, jellied consomme is a clear soup set in gelatin. It is made from richly flavored stock or broth that has been clarified, which is a process that uses egg whites to remove fat. So not only does it taste good, but it's healthy too. It's like someone decided to turn soup into a science experiment. This strange soup originated in the UK and has many variations, including double consomme, which is basically the same recipe with twice the amount of meat used. This dish was all the rage back in the day, probably because people thought it looked fancy. But let's be real, it's more like a horror movie prop than a food. Can you imagine slurping up that wobbly, gelatinous broth? I'm not sure my stomach could handle it. And that's probably the reason why we don't see this one on our dinner tables anymore. Liverwurst and onion sandwiches were once a lunchtime favorite. Liverwurst or liver sausage is a kind of sausage made from liver, so it was the perfect meal for when no part of the animal could go to waste. There were very limited meats available during the World Wars, and people had to use whatever they could find, including livers and hearts. Liverwurst was often spread thickly on rye bread and topped with thinly sliced onions. This sandwich was very popular in Europe and different parts of South America such as Argentina and Chile. I don't know about you, but the combination of iron-rich liver and pungent onion doesn't sit right with me. It was like a flavor explosion in your mouth, but not in a good way. I'm pretty sure this sandwich was invented as a punishment, but you know, people really had to make do with whatever they could find back in the day, and this dish was just a result of that experiment. Meatloaf. Who doesn't love this classic comfort food? But what happens when you get a sweet craving and add a little twist to it? Well, you get meatloaf with brown sugar glaze. Meatloaf is a traditional German, Scandinavian, and Belgian dish, and it is a cousin to the meatball in Dutch cuisine. But a brown sugar glaze? That's where things got exciting. This dish was a culinary experiment of the way days, and it's safe to say it was a huge success. Every continent came up with their own variations of this dinner, and it became a centerpiece at every dinner table. It was basically combining ground meat, breadcrumbs, and spices topped with a caramelized brown sugar and ketchup glaze. What could go wrong with that? Meatloaf is still a staple for most people around the world, but you don't really see it get paired with a brown sugar glaze anymore. It was just a post-war craving, I guess. Creamed chipped beef on toast, often referred to as SOS, was a popular military meal that made its way into civilian kitchens. Now, this one was equal parts comforting and questionable. Think of it as dried beef, reconstituted into a creamy, salty sauce, and then plopped on top of toast. It's like someone tried to make a fancy grilled cheese, but accidentally ended up in the weird food hall of fame. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's definitely a unique flavor profile. It was also known as fizzled beef and was served as breakfast in many diners across the U.S. during the post-war days. And it wasn't just limited to toast. Chipped beef was also often served on bagels, English muffins, biscuits, home fries, rice, mashed potato, and in casserole. Some people even tried flavoring it with Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, now we're talking. This one's faded from our dinner tables but hasn't been able to escape our memories just yet. Canned ham was like the instant ramen of foods back in the post-war days. In 1940, it started gaining traction as the miracle meat during World War II. It was also transported as an aid to Great Britain and the Soviet Union. Canned ham was nothing fancy which was the best thing about this meal. It was perfect for busy households or people on the run. 
Plus, its long shelf life was like the cherry on top. Back in the day, this was a convenience food dream come true. No fuss, no muss, just a whole lot of ham. But let's be real. Fresh ham is where it's at. Unless you're stranded on a desert island, I'd stick to the deli counter. We don't need to punish ourselves with canned meat anymore, which is why this dinner has become a part of ancient history. While we're on the topic of ham, this next dish added a fruity twist to it. Yep, we're talking about ham and banana hollandaise. Sweet banana, salty ham, and rich creamy hollandaise sauce. Some might call it adventurous, others might call it a crime against food. This dish made a lot of buzz in the 1970s, and bananas have never appeared more out of their element ever since. It was featured in McCall's Great American Recipe Card Collection in 1973 and took the world by storm due to its uniqueness. The Hollandaise was a creamy sauce, first born in France and was originally known as Sauce Isigny, named after a small town in Normandy famous for its butter and cream. This dish really proves that in a time of desperation, anyone will eat anything. But hey, at least it was memorable. If you're a fan of pineapple on pizza, you would have loved this next one. Pineapple and cheese salad was a unique delight back in the day. This dish came into existence when someone decided to mix pineapple and cheese together in times of misery. Imagine cubes of pineapple in a creamy cheese mixture, terrifying or finger-licking delicious? there's no in-between. This was a variation of the infamous candle salad, which was a vintage fruit salad popular in America in the 1920s and was typically composed of lettuce, pineapple, banana, cherry, and either mayonnaise or cottage cheese. This was considered a luxurious delicacy during the tough times of the war, but just fails to meet the standards now. It's still a great way to use up leftover pineapple from your holiday punch if you're ever feeling adventurous. Ever tried hot Dr. Pepper? This warm beverage was made by heating Dr. Pepper and adding lemon slices. It was used in the war days to warm up your insides during the cold winter months. Say goodbye to hot cocoa because hot Dr. Pepper was all the rage back in the day. It was pretty simple to make. All you had to do was heat the soda to 180 degrees in a stovetop saucepan, then pour it over a thin slice of lemon. It was introduced by the brand to increase sales during colder days when no one wanted a chilly soft drink. Smart marketing, don't you think? So, why did this drink disappear? Well, people just stick to the cold serving of Dr. Pepper now and I'm not complaining. Canned luncheon meat was like Spam's less famous but more generic cousin during the post-war days. It was another affordable protein source that was readily available everywhere. It was used in sandwiches, salads, or simply eaten on its own when no other resource was around. It was also a good choice for big households when wallets were too tight back in the day. It was an instant hint in the States and made its way to other parts of the world before it became a pantry staple in Europe too. I mean, what's not to love about a cheap, easy-to-make meat option that's easy to store and prepare? But let's be honest, it's probably best left in the can. Unless you're a fan of processed meat flavor, I know I'm not. Hogshead cheese is one of the more bizarre meals on the list. Okay, before you jump to any conclusions judging from the name, this meaty meal doesn't contain any cheese or any dairy products at all. This unique delicacy originated somewhere in ancient Germany and instantly made its way to other parts of Europe. So, if not cheese, what was it actually made of? It was basically flesh from the head of a pig, typically set in aspic and usually eaten cold, at room temperature, or in a sandwich. This dish was popular in the post-war era as it made use of every part of the animal, reflecting a time when nothing went to waste. Many recipes use a bit of lemon juice to add a bit more flavor to the jelly. It has disappeared from our dinner tables and menus, and I don't think this one calls for a comeback. Corned beef hash was pretty much a mix of corned beef, potatoes, and onions. Corned beef, also known as salt beef, was popular in most Commonwealth countries during both the World Wars. Although the exact origin of corned beef is unknown, it most likely came about when people began preserving meat through salt curing. This dish was a practical way to use up leftovers and stretch food supplies and was often served for breakfast or dinner. The best part? 
it was very filling at a very low cost. It is also the ultimate hangover cure before or at least it was before people discovered avocado toast. But let's be real, nothing beats a good plate of hash when you're craving something satisfying. Turkey Tetrazzini was a mid-century Italian-American delicacy back in the day. In 1950s through the 1980s, upscale New York City restaurants including Mama Leone's and Sardi's featured Tetrazzini on the menu. It was a creamy pasta bake made with turkey, mushrooms, and sometimes peas, all coated in a rich white sauce and baked until bubbly. This dish was named after Italian opera singer Luisa Tetrazzini. In some variations, egg noodles were used instead. This dish was a popular way to use up leftover turkey, particularly after Thanksgiving, and it became a beloved comfort food in many American households. Today, it's less common to find it on dinner tables, but for those who remember it, Turkey Tetrazzini is a nostalgic reminder of family meals and holiday leftovers. Vienna sausages were thin parboiled sausages traditionally made of pork and beef in a casing of sheep's intestine, then given a low temperature smoking. These originated in Germany during the First World War and were traditionally made from cured pork. After having been brought to North America by European immigrants, Vienna sausage came to mean only smaller and much shorter smoked and canned wieners, rather than link sausage, beginning about 1903. During the post-war days, it became a famous finger food at parties and family gatherings. From hot dogs to casseroles, Vienna sausages can do it all. Just don't expect a gourmet experience. They're still available today, but they're nowhere as famous as they once were. There's no better way of repurposing leftover mashed potatoes than making potato cakes. It's a name given to various shaped potato dishes around the world, including a patty of hashed potatoes, a fried patty of mashed potato, a fried and battered slice of potato, or a flatbread made with mashed potato and flour. These fried patties were crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, often served as a side dish or breakfast item. In Northern England and some states in Australia, a thin slice of potato that was battered and deep fried was called a potato scallop. In Australia and New Zealand, the terms potato cake, potato flip, and potato fritter were used instead. They were often flavored with onions, herbs, or cheese and served with a dollop of sour cream or alongside other breakfast items like eggs and bacon. With the rise of hash browns, potato cakes are barely missed today. But if you ever feel like cooking something comforting, I say give this one a try. Lamb's fry was a dish that ain't for the faint of heart. Hear me out, lamb's fry is lamb offal served as food, including the testicles, liver, sweetbreads, heart, kidneys, and sometimes the brain and abdominal fat. Yep, you heard that right. Walker's Hibernian Magazine mentions breakfasts of nice stewed lamb's fry, eaten on the day of Swanhop in 1786, so this one is pretty old and has run its course. The preparation involved slicing the liver and sweetbreads, then frying them with onions and sometimes bacon in a pan, and the dish was often served with gravy and mashed potatoes. The best part about it? Economical and nutrients, all in one. It's a classic dish that's fallen out of favor, but for some, it's a culinary treasure. It's rich, flavorful, and definitely an acquired taste. So, if you're feeling brave, give lamb's fry a try. Just be prepared for a strong opinion. Now, deviled ham is a little mysterious. Right off the bat, it's a simple canned spread made from ground ham, but the term deviled comes from the addition of spicy seasonings. It was made by the William Underwood Company, founded in 1822, but here is where things hit interesting Underwood deviled ham owes its existence in part to Napoleon Bonaparte, who inspired the practice of canning food. Americans were slow to embrace canned foods, but it became popular in the post-war era due to its convenience and long shelf life and was a staple in lunch boxes and picnic baskets, perfect on crackers, sandwiches, or as a dip for veggies. It's a classic appetizer that deserves a comeback. So next time you're looking for something different to serve your guests, give deviled ham a try. You might be surprised. This next dish is all about comfort and simplicity. Boiled ham hocks were a staple in many post-war households, 
it was a classic southern dish that's perfect for a cold winter day. Ham hocks, which are the lower part of the pig's leg, were boiled with vegetables to create a flavorful and hearty dish. This one was straight out of the dreams of every meat lover, as meat from the hocks was tender and the broth rich. It originated in Germany and made its way to other parts of the world with different variations whipped up in different countries. In the Appalachian Mountains, it is common to add ham hocks along with chopped onion and spices to pots of pinto beans to make the meal more hearty. Boiled ham hocks were often served with cornbread or crusty bread, which made it a complete dinner meal. Ambrosia salad is a fruit salad made with canned fruit, mini marshmallows, and coconut, often mixed with sour cream or whipped cream. Finally, something normal and sweet. It is an American variety of fruit salad originating in the southern United States. This sweet and creamy dish was a popular dessert or side dish at potlucks, picnics, and holiday gatherings. The name ambrosia refers to the food of the gods in Greek mythology. You can add whatever you want to this salad, which makes it completely customizable. In New Zealand, ambrosia refers to a similar dish made with whipped cream, yogurt, fresh canned or frozen berries, and chocolate chips or marshmallows loosely combined into a pudding. It's the perfect way to use up leftover fruit and it's always a crowd pleaser. Plus, it's incredibly easy to make. So, next time you're hosting a potluck or barbecue, bring a bowl of ambrosia salad. Your guests will thank you. Last, but definitely not least, we have the ultimate comfort food, braised pork belly. Red braised pork belly, or hongshao ru, is a classic pork dish from China, red cooked using pork belly and a combination of ginger, garlic, aromatic spices, chilies, sugar, star anise, light and dark soy sauce, and rice wine. The pork belly is cooked until the fat and skin are gelatinous, soft, and melt easily in the mouth, while the sauce is usually thick, sweet, and fairly sticky. It was a popular choice for family meals and special occasions back in the day and was considered a luxurious delicacy. Many Chinese provinces have slightly different versions, but the Hunanese one is often said to have been one of Chairman Mao's favorite dishes and is served at the many Hunan restaurants across China. It's not popular in other parts of the world anymore, so if you're ever craving it, plan a trip to China. Do these post-war foods stir up tasty memories? If so, like this video, click subscribe, and stay tuned for more nostalgia trips.